Hello and welcome to another edition of uh, Waterstone Legal Videos. I'm William Van Roosbalen, one of the lawyers at Waterstone, and with me is Kelly Cox. Hi everyone. Uh, one of our junior lawyers uh, at Waterstone. Today we're talking about a really exciting topic, statutory demands. Um, it's a big part of what we do in the liquidation industry and it's super relevant to uh, a whole bunch of different businesses, small businesses uh, alike. They'll all be familiar with the process, so we just wanted to give you guys a bit of a rundown of the process, some introductory points, some tips and tricks, um, and some of the legal requirements. Well, we're not going to go too in depth with the legal stuff because it can be a bit boring. So, by way of an introduction, statutory demands are a debt collection tool, so they can be used to uh, force a debtor to pay money that you think is owing to you and there's a thousand dollar minimum amount um, that you can issue a statutory demand on. The debt has got to be undisputed um, and it can't be a contingent debt or anything like that. It's got to be due and payable. A uh, secondary purpose of a statutory demand is a formal demand. What I mean by that is that you can use it in court to prove evidence of the company's insolvency and try and put it uh, into liquidation. So it's kind of got dual purposes. Um, there's different opinions on what primary purpose is, uh, but there's, not, there's nothing wrong with using it as a, a debt collection tool. Kelly, why don't you t run us through some of the Companies Act requirements for a statutory demand? What do you need to put in them? Um, okay. And what's What's mandatory? Um, so um, under section 289 of the Companies Act you've got the mandatory requirements uh, for a statutory demand and uh, one of those being that um, the debt is obviously due and um, mm. owing, um, can't be a future debt and can't be a contingent debt either. Uh, the second requirement is that the statutory demand must be in writing. And then um, the last requirement is that you, you need to set out um, the three kind of ways to deal with the statutory demand. So when the debtor receives it, do they um, pay the demand? Do they enter into a compromise with the creditor? Or do they you know, give security over the, the assets? Um, so yes, and what's important about that last requirement is that you, you need to kind of deal with statutory demand within 15 working days. Uh, yeah, so. Cool. Um, another point to note is that uh, the statutory demand has got to be served on the debtor company. The Companies Act sets out the requirements for service. Um, it's not a legal proceeding, so you can't treat it like if you were suing someone. You have to serve it in accordance with the Companies Act, and it's got its own rules. Um, you can talk to a lawyer about what those rules are. We won't cover them off. The legal test for service is that it comes to the attention of the debtor company. So. If you meet that requirement, then you're probably going to be safe. But again, it's, it's a question for a lawyer probably to um, help you out with affecting um, that test. There are other alternatives that a company that's owed money mm -hmm. has yep. to a statutory demand. Uh, you can write to the debtor company and say, we think you owe us this money, please pay it within X amount of working mm -hmm. days. Um, and another alternative is that you can agree with the debtor company to give you a charge over um, their assets. So take a security like a mortgage or a lien yeah. or something like that. It's quite common for mechanics, for example, mm -hmm. to take a lien over um, customers' yeah. cars. And they say, we take your car, we do the work, but we don't give you your car back until you pay us. Um, that's probably the most common example of that. You touched on this briefly, Kelly. Um, the, the debtor company, when it's served with a statutory demand, they've got a few choices. Yeah. Um, how does a company, how does a debtor company respond to a statutory demand? What, what, what options have they got? Well, I mean, they've ultimately got three options. Uh, they can either ignore the statutory demand um, if they, you know, know that the debt is not due, or if they think that it's invalid. Uh, this is a really high risk approach though, um, and I'll get into to why that is. Um, the second option is obviously to just comply with the statutory demand, um, you know, approach the creditor and you know, pay off that demand or again enter into that compromise. And then the third option is um, under section 290 to make an application to set aside the statutory demand. Uh, there are a couple of important things to note with setting aside the statutory demand. Um, you only have 10 working days um, to do that. So once you've been served, then you've obviously got those, those days 
Um, the court though won't extend that time frame. So that's really, really important to know. If you are planning to set aside a statutory demand, you have to bring that application within the 10 working days. Uh, the court will extend the time for compliance with the statutory demand, uh, but not um, the time to bring that statutory demand, or to bring that application to set it aside. And that's why the ignoring the statutory demand approach is quite high risk, uh, because if it turns out that you know, that debt is due and owing and you wanted to set it aside well. If the 10 days have lapsed, then you can't. Tough biggies. So, yeah. Um, you will probably need to engage lawyers if you want to apply to set aside a statutory yep. demand. Um, a company can only be represented by a solicitor in court. Um, mm -hmm. The director can't just rock up and plead his case. Um, so you're going to have to engage lawyers. The sooner the better, really. Um, as Kelly said, you've only got 10 working days to oppose uh, a statutory demand uh, or apply to set it aside. So um, it's really not a lot of time. Uh, you have to engage lawyers. They have to draft the application. Uh, you have to get evidence uh, to support the application. That's by way of affidavit. Um, and you also have to correct any errors also that the client's made or details that are omitted. And, a whole bunch of different things that need to be done before um, that 10 working days yeah. expires. Um, so assuming that all of that's taken place, you've hired some lawyers, they've filed an application to set aside a statutory demand, uh, and then you go to court, you have an argument. The court's got a few options. Uh, one of the options is that they can extend the time for compliance mm -hmm. with payments. So they can say, yep, um, we agree that the payment's due and owing, um, but we're going to give you another month to pay it off pay it off in instalments and then come back to court in a month and um, we'll see if you've complied with it. Another option for the court which is quite interesting is that they can um, make an order for the liquidation of the yeah. company immediately. That is quite an aggressive choice uh, mm -hmm. but it's a really powerful one because it will put the debtor company on the back foot mm. uh, from the get-go yeah. um, and in your initial demand you can say if we uh, if you do apply to set aside the statutory demand, we will be asking the court to place you into immediate liquidation if your application is unsuccessful. It means that the stakes become very high for yeah. the debtor company because that choice is always on the cards for the mm. court. Yeah. Um, so again, taking good legal advice is uh, quite important. Well, especially with a statutory demand, right? Because mm. um, there are, you know, dire consequences if it's not dealt with. Yeah. Because, um, yeah, I mean, ultimately, if it's all left and ignored and the, the creditor continues with the whole process, your company might end up in liquidation. Yeah. So, yeah. Um, so um, those are kind of the main points that we wanted to cover off with respect to statutory demands. Like we said, they are a very common debt collection tool. Um, they are used by small businesses and biz biz big businesses alike um, and it's most important to get uh, legal advice uh, when you are either issuing a statutory demand or responding to one once you've, once you've received it. Um, if you guys have got any questions or comments or want to uh, get some more information on statutory demands or anything liquidation related, um, please just drop us a comment below or uh, send us an email with it in the link in the description. Yeah, awesome. Thanks for watching. Thank you guys so much. Cheers.